today we're in Wales. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. No, Borodá. Oh, Good you'll morning. You'll find out later. <laughs> and there's a bit of a community spirit going on here. Loads of guys. The scenery's fantastic, but the gardens need a little bit of invader magic. They do indeed. Now, we've got a design, we've got some materials, and we've got some invaders, but we'll only have some plants if the garden owners can answer Charlie's tricky gardening questions. Right then, we better get on with it. Come on. Today, we're in Grey Garaka to invade the garden of Christina Martin and her partner, Peter Kernow. Christina is from Madrid and fell in love with Peter while he was on holiday there. They've saved hard to get onto the property ladder, but all of their time has been taken up renovating the inside of the house, so the poor old garden hasn't had much of a look in. Good job we're here. Well, Christina, Peter, the garden needs some sort of inspiration, doesn't it, really? Oh, yeah. I would think so, yeah. <laughs> Have you got any, Andy? Um, I'm trying to sum some up. There's a, it's got a lovely view over there. <laughs> That's the best bit. That's, That's a fantastic bit. view. So is this the first house you've bought? First house together. Yeah. Yeah. First house together, yeah. 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 Uh, we manage at last. And, um, Get a foot well, on, the on the ladder, isn't it? So. Yeah. It, it was too expensive in Bristol. We were working full time, both of us, and Still all the money enough. was going yeah. Yeah, to Saving the rent. all your money. Yeah. And it it's just, just going nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. So how long have you been in this house? Uh, nine well, months, well, nearly well, a year. Nearly a year now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. And having walked through it, it looks like you're sort of halfway through renovating yeah. that. Yeah. Just halfway, yeah. I, I will say. That's well, less than half. <laughs> Hence why the garden is still, still yeah. like this. There's one plant in the garden, oh, yeah. at least. Yes. Yes. Right, that's my yes. future bush, aren't <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, there's some very nice scented plants and there's some strawberries here and there. Are you into your gardening? I am into gardening, especially kitchen garden. OK, so garden. it's good to have a blank canvas, actually. Yeah. I'm quite yeah. pleased about that. So good. you want a bit of Spain in the garden. Have you got any ideas other than a bit of Spain? Um, Colour, energy. Colour, somewhere you can use, where you can enjoy the space. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. we are not the sort of people sitting down in the fireplace. We prefer to be outside. outside. We need you guys. Stop <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have to say, having path right down the centre it's like not that good, is, it? no. it's not good, no. is it? It's not good, is it really? It's not the best, no. We might, yeah. we might get rid of that. Oh, lovely. <laughs> so who's doing the questions and who's working? Mm. Christine I will take the up. challenge of the questions. And yeah. I'll do the work, I don't mind that. OK, yeah. so where are we doing the questions? Um, Next. Down my lovely neighbour, Beryl. Two doors down. Two After doors you, down. then. Thank you. And you have to come with me and do some work. Oh, boy. <laughs> so I think what we're going to have to do is uh, put something into this garden, really. Yeah. Thanks, Alex. Now, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a lot of paving, get rid of all this grass, get rid of the path down to the front, but do it as a series of patios. So you can still get to right. that gate, but it's not a dead straight path. Yeah. It's not boring. Yeah. Break but the space. We're going to use, exactly. Yeah. We're going to use terracotta paving, so it has a Spanish feel oh, to it, and some fairly yeah. exotic looking planting. Have a water feature here. Right. Going to keep a bit of grass, put some new grass down and wrap it around the side. Right. And we're going to have a focal point as well. We're going to have a pot. We're going to have a pergola too. All right. And that pergola is going to screen out somewhere next door. We're going to keep your lovely view open. <laughs> lovely. So that's the plan there. Okay. Now, you're going to be an invader for the day. So if you wear this T-shirt, thanks, Neil, get that on and you right. can come with me and do a bit of work. Thank you. Cheery little garden, isn't it? It is. Lots it's lovely. Of, lots of flowers, oh, and lots of fruit and veg yeah. as well. Well, tomatoes, they are, yeah. they are really tasty. They yeah. are <laughs> good. Now, you must miss the sunshine from Spain. I do. Yeah, in <laughs> Wales, you don't get that much sunshine, no. unfortunately. But we've got some really nice plants here that are going to give you a bit of colour and also with a bit of a Spanish theme, some of them. So Definitely. this group here are perennials, all soft pastel colours, and then we've got some Spanish shrubs over here. Then we've got some climbers because your fence is quite dominant in the garden, isn't it? It yeah. looks quite big being a small garden. And then the last group are the sort of spiky plants and there's some lavenders there, so they give a lot of variegation and shape to the garden. And you've got to come see the Lovely. finishing touches. Come with me. <laughs> so just out here, look at that. Bit big, bit oh heavy God. to get into Beryl's garden, but you've got yeah. seats, you've got a table, you've got night lights, lanterns, barbecue. It's lovely. Not your department, though. That's going to be Peter's now. Okay. Question one. <laughs> Back to the plants. 
plants. Now, let me tell you a bit more about this first group of plants. We've got the penstemon, which is a herbaceous plant, so that means it dies down every winter, but it does come back up. And unusually for a herbaceous plant, you don't need to stake it. The stems are actually quite strong. And then we've got lobelia there. Lobelias aren't 100% hardy, so the best thing to do is in the winter, pile some compost over the top of the plant, because that yeah. dies down as well. Or you can dig it up and bring it inside. Mm -hmm. And then agapanthus, this is a white variety, semi-evergreen, so the leaves sort of stay there, but it's better just to tidy it up and, mm. and take the leaves off. So are you ready for this first question? I am. They are lovely. I want to win them. <laughs> OK. Right. The increasingly popular miniature roses, which are grown in containers, are also called patio roses, terrace roses or pot roses? Definitely there are no patio roses. I will say, what was the last one? Pot roses. I will go for that one. Pot roses. Unfortunately, you're wrong. Oh. No, they are actually patio roses. Oh. They were originally called miniature, but now they call them patio roses. Never mind, we're going to get the Spanish shrubs though. Now this garden had the typical straight path down the middle, bit of grass on either side, really, really boring. Now we still need to get to that gate at the end. So what I'm doing here is putting in two separate patios so that sort of interlock, but it doesn't really look like a path even though it functions as one. This is gonna be the main seating area here. And up above it, we're gonna have a pergola. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna give some height and structure to the garden. And then around the back area, we're going to have this lawn. So it puts some green, fresh green into the garden. Wrap that around the patio, some stepping stones through to the gate. And we've actually found some roses over there. So there are more plants in the garden than I thought. So when this is done, it should be really good. Now, Christina, you met Peter on holiday in Spain? Actually, uh, Peter flew away there for holidays on his own and the first night he arrived there at two o'clock in the morning very tired thinking I'm going to bed but he decided to go clubbing. The same happened to me, I was tired but literally one friend of mine just dragged me out to go to the same club and actually we just found each other there and we never separated since then. Oh. That's a lovely love story, yeah. very sweet. I hope it will stay that way for a long time. <laughs> I'm sure it will. Now, you've lost the first group of plants, but I'm, I did. <laughs> I'm feeling positive here on these ones. We've got, I am as well. <laughs> we've got some really nice shrubs with a Spanish theme. We've got pomegranate, it's a dwarf one, so it won't get too big. Now, the only thing with that, it's not gonna be hardy, especially here in Wales. It's a bit too wet for it, so you're gonna have to bring it in during the winter. Now, oleander, or nerium, has these lovely flowers and it comes in all sorts of colours, comes in whites, yeah. pinks, reds, likes a really sunny spot, free draining soil, but you get flowers all through the summer once it starts flowering. Now the shrub that is hardy is that Pittosporum down there, it's a variegated one, evergreen, and in the early summer it has tiny flowers but they're really, really sweetly scented. Right. Right, I want to get them. <laughs> now just think about this one. The white beam is a type of what? Is it a grass, a meadow flower, or a tree? I will go for, what was the third one? Tree, meadow flower, or grass? Tree. Yay! Oh! Yay! Oh, Matt, come and get the shrubs. That's, That's better. Lovely. <laughs> so at least you've got some Thank Spanish shrubs. Thank you, I shrubs. love this one. There's going to be far. a bit of work there, though. Yeah. Now these new fences make this garden feel a little bit smaller because they're so dark. So to try and improve on that, I've put these light coloured wood panels on here. And this trellis is going to be ideal for climbing plants, which is a bit presumptuous of me, because if Christina doesn't win the climbers, we're not going to have anything to actually grow up it. Apart from this one, because I have actually found we've got some roses growing here already, so at least we can grow something up there. We've also got this pergola to grow plants up. 
It has a fairly sort of Spanish feel to it. Got these machined round posts here and it gives a lot of privacy and it'll hopefully screen out some of these houses from next door and make this area feel pretty private. And then underneath, we've got this very Spanish looking patio, which looks just like terracotta, but in fact it's not, is it Dave? It's not, it's concrete, but the presses that they make these out of are actually made from real terracotta. Yeah. That's why they're so convincing. And are they easy to lay? Absolute doddle, you know what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm like, you know how good I am, by Yeah, well, it's like the pergola, it flew up yeah, no time at all. Absolute doddle. Uh, now, these things are quite cheap and hard wearing as well, aren't they? Real terracotta cracks in the frost mm. and end up looking, it'll age very, very fast. This will last 10, 15 years, no problem at all. And once it's weathered a bit and the newness is gone, this will actually look very realistic, won't it? Will. it? Right. Certainly will. Get on with it, then. Get on with it. So, is Peter very practical? Well, Garden wise and DIY wise, he is. He's much better than me, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, well, I will say the best part is I'm going to tell you a secret. Yeah. I really do love him because he just carries the bags. So, you do, like all the shopping and he, Yeah, everything. He carries absolutely. It. Yeah, it's a bad habit I got. I, <laughs> I just love it when I see a man carrying heavy things. Does just... he open the door for you and everything? Yeah, like yeah, that? he's very gentleman. Oh, lovely. Yeah. That's very sweet. Now we've got some great climbers here for you. The clematis over there, really pretty one. Blue flowers. It's called yeah, rhapsody. Yeah. I rhapsody. presume. I presume after rhapsody in blue. With clematis, you want to make sure that you plant them deep because they get a disease that cuts them off at ground level. So if you've planted them down deep, you'll get shoots that will come up from the ground and it'll regrow. Then we've got trackless burnum, which is an evergreen climber. It sort of climbs by twining. It's got these lovely little star-shaped flowers, which are really sweetly scented. Yeah, then we've got Campsis radicans. This one's called Indian Summer, and it has great big orange trumpet flowers. Quite a vigorous climber, needs quite a bit of space, but that'll be good in your garden because you've got yeah. all that fence to cover. We've got trees there, which is Ficus carica nero, which is, you probably recognise it, it's fig. Fig tree. Fig tree. Now, the great thing about fig trees is you can train them against walls, so it, it can be a wall shrub or a wall tree as well. I have a feeling that you might know this answer, anyhow, so I'm not going to help at all. Which Spanish city gives its name to a type of orange used to make marmalade? Is it Malaga, Seville or Cadiz? Seville is famous for oranges, quite famous, but you know, in Spain there is so many cities where you can grow oranges mm -hmm. that really, it's not that easy, that question. Now these oranges are really good for making marmalade because they're high in pectin, so it makes it set properly. Yeah, I will say that I will go for Seville. You're right. I ah! thought that was going to be easy for you, my dear. Right, I'm going to go and tell them the but you get news. You get oranges all over Spain. Yeah, this Murcia, is true. they go on a speciality in oranges. Valencia. See, we're learning things about oranges so, you didn't know, but you I'm going to go and see the boys in the garden. You stay there. It's lovely. <laughs> well, it definitely looks different. Coming on, isn't it? It is. Um, I think that's probably deep enough now, Paul. We don't. I know it's a deep hole, Charlie, but don't worry, all will be well. <laughs> Please. We're, not... we're not sure what it's for, but we're looking into it. <laughs> <laughs> Climbers, yes. hey, marvellous, great. Should look good on this. Yeah, that's coming on nicely. Paving's pretty much finished there. Yeah. Dave's done a sterling job of that. And how's Peter been going? Very good, actually. Lots of uh, very good bacon sandwiches and stuff. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. really good on the gardening side of yeah, things. Well, yeah, that as well. I suppose I better not walk on the paving. So you've got a yeah. bit of an audience as yeah. well. Yeah. Now, Christina says that you're the typical English gentleman. I am, yeah. I do like to romance the ladies. Oh, and she did say you were very good at DIY and gardening, but you've spent all your time in the kitchen. As well as, yeah, I'm working. As well as working. Yeah. Do you think she's going to like it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah she'll love it. Yeah, and do you speak that. Spanish? I can speak perfect Spanish. Can you? Yeah. Go on, then. Go on, Yo puedo hablar español muy bien. Ah, I was going to say that. <laughs> well, Peter might be good at DIY and gardening, but at the moment he's just making everyone bacon sandwiches, so that's for you a bit later. He was worried about you that you'd not had anything to eat. 
Right, we got some great plants over there. Very spiky, as you've probably noticed as you were sat right next to the agave americana. I love it because you get the imprints on the side of the plant where the leaves curl round. Have got really sharp points to them, so you can either cut them off or people push corks on them, which make them look quite quirky. And then we got Formium. That one's called Pink Panther. It's got lovely sort of bronze and pink striped mm. leaves. It's quite a tough plant. It, it, the leaves are evergreen, but the, the leaves are quite tough to pull off. And then some lavenders to give you some scent and a bit of a Mediterranean feel. Mm. Now, this question is a horticultural question. All right. OK, now I've got three different edible things here. We've got a leek. We've got runner beans or string beans, and we've got tomatoes. Now, which one of those three is a fruit? I will say that these, oh, we lost the yellow one. <laughs> Never mind. This one is a fruit. You're right. Well oh. done. <laughs> fantastic. So I just need Thank an invader you. to take the spiky plants away. Lovely. Fantastic. <laughs> You're not finished, though. You might have finished your questions, but we've got a little project to do. <laughs> We're having a quiet time in the garden now. All the invaders have settled down really well. Look at them. There hasn't been a peep out of them for 20 minutes. It's been marvellous. Of course, there's always one who doesn't behave well. Dave's had to go and stand in the corner because he did something unspeakable. All right, Dave, another five minutes, you can join the rest of the class. Now, what I'm doing here is making a water feature, and it's incredibly simple, it's because it comes as a kit. It's going to be a brimming urn, which means that we're going to fill this urn up, it's going to have water in here, and it's going to gently bubble over the top, down the sides, and then into this reservoir. Now, this holds the water, so we fill that up with water. We've basically packed it all around the edge with sand, because that helps to get it level. Once you've done that, the lid goes on and there's a little pump that drops down into the reservoir. The tube comes up through the middle like that and it fits onto this special fitting here on the bottom of the urn. So that's nice and watertight there. It screws on pretty simply and then you just stand that up like that. Basically you cover the whole of that lid with cobbles like this. Put them around the base and then we can plant up all around here as well. And that's it, simple as that. Right, Christine, make yourself comfortable in that seat there. Thank now you. we've got some marine ply and we've got some really nice sort of terracotta shaded tiles. And we've got scissors and sandpaper gloves and adhesive. And in Spain, you see quite a lot of mosaics, don't you? Yes, you do. So I'd like you to be quite arty and come up with a design to go on there that I can hang on the wall. That's fantastic. You look like you're going to enjoy that. I am going to enjoy it, definitely. <laughs> You're not the fairest of them all, my dear. Oh, well. What are you doing? Well, uh, Apart from looking at yourself. Yeah, I'm looking at this mirror. Now, I've got this mirror, and I reckon that, uh, although it looks pretty good at the moment... Oh, I've... please! <laughs> I thought it could be even better looking if you could do something with it. Maybe some sort of Gaudi-esque job round the edge. To so, who of... stuck this on, then? Well, not me. I'm not taking any responsibility for that. It's a bit random. It is a bit random, isn't it? It's Wouldn't... getting more random <laughs> as we go on. But, uh, yeah, we can need this in the garden. Bit of colour, okay. bit of well, art. So, to mirror Christina's project. Exactly. Aww. Very good. Now, of course, what it turns out like is totally down to you. So, uh, I'll let you get on with it. I won't be letting you look back in it. You might crack it. We've obviously got a Spanish theme going on today. Nothing could be more Spanish than this oleander. But these exotic plants bring problems because they need to be kept warm through the winter or they won't survive. In this case, you need to give it a really nice warm duvet. So these canes go into the ground and then bubble wrap 
all round there, and that will keep it lovely and toasty warm. But it also needs a nice pair of slippers at the base. Good couple of inches of mulch here, and that will keep the roots warm through the winter. But different plants bring different problems. This agave hates winter wet. If its roots are wet in the winter, it will die. So what you've got to do is mix in lots of sharp sand or grit and the water will drain out freely. Now there's one more tip. Polystyrene like this will also keep the roots warm. I've packed it around the base inside the pot here with this pomegranate. But you also need some underneath because a lot of the coal will come up from the floor. So you can put some on the paving, that will also raise the pot up and let water drain out well. Put that on there, and that should also be happy through the winter. Well, that's not half bad, Christina. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> oh. I really enjoy doing it. No, it's still wet, though. Yeah, a little. A I little, forgot yeah. to tell you about that. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> I, I had a great time, uh -huh. you know, thinking about the patterns and so on. Very geometric. It is. It's South, kind of... South American, Latino. Yeah. Yeah? Part of Latino personality, you know? it is like kind of nonsense with sense, sort of thing. <laughs> okay, Just I like think me. I understand. <laughs> right, well, that's you finished now, so you can pop in the house, but no peeking out the back. All right. All right. I'll go and hang this up. Clematis come in a huge range of colours and flower shapes and sizes. There are so many hundreds of them, it's amazing. But there are three distinct groups for pruning. Some you have to prune hard in the spring, some you prune not at all, and these ones, like Clematis Rhapsody, a light trim in the spring and it will flower from June right through to September. Fig trees are ideal plants for warmer gardens where you can grow them against a sunny wall. But if you don't live in a warm part of the country, don't worry, because they love to be grown in pots. If their roots are restricted, they fruit even better. And if they're in a pot, you can bring them into a cool greenhouse over the winter and they'll live through to next year. These spiky succulents from Central America are very useful plants because different varieties are used to produce sisal and even tequila. This one, Agave Americana, is known as the century plant because they used to think that it flowered only once every 100 years. If you grow it in this country, you have to give it a really well-drained soil, so fork in lots of grit or sharp sand, and that'll keep the water away from the bottom of the plant in winter. But it also likes growing well in a pot. Well, here you go, just cleaning off the last of the mirror and the tiles with my mosaic mirror, which should look quite nice and complement Christina's project. The thing to remember with mosaics is not to do too large an area because it seems like really good fun to start with. And then you get really bored because it's very fiddly. It's picking all the grouting off and cleaning it off takes ages. And also keep the design nice and simple and it's much better impact that way. Peter, when you were on holiday and you met Christina, you must have sat around some beautiful oh, yes. tables like this. Yeah, this is a beaut. It's lovely, Very isn't nice. it? I have Very to say. Nice. And she has got her heart rather set on it when I show it. Yeah, you've got the seats, you've got Ooh. the barbecue, the table, the night lights. we got the sunshine now. That's beautiful today. Isn't it? All you've got to do is answer the question right. Give it to me. All right, here we go then. A layer of loose material such as bark, grass cuttings, or gravel that's laid on top of soil is known as what? Is it a blanket, a mulch, or a screen? Well, I have actually just unloaded all the bags of chippings out of the van, and I know it's a mulch. Fantastic! Yes. You're still going to be very popular then, <laughs> and you're going to have to carry that into the oh, garden. Oh, no, on and my she, own. she likes the guy that can lift really heavy <laughs> yeah, weights. <I> know. <laughs> And open the door. She likes for me it. carrying the shop in. Right, you, well, <laughs> what you're going to do is pop in the house. Right. Clean up, chill out, but don't tell her anything. Don't tell her you've done this. Okay. All right. Yep. And nothing about the garden. No, Off you go. Now, this morning, when we turned up, what did the garden look like? 
Savage. <laughs> savage? <laughs> Green very Savage. Plain, it? Very plain, uh, Very plain and inviting. Can I open my yes, eyes now? you can open your eyes now. It's fantastic! <laughs> it's fantastic! All your plants. Oh, guys, it's yeah. absolutely gorgeous. Oh, look at that! Got your barbecue. I'm going to get fat there. <laughs> it's just so, so... Que bonito, que bonito. Pardon? <laughs> very pretty, very Didn't pretty. Sound very well. Very pretty, me. very pretty. So we took out that boring straight path he had there and put in a few patios and we've used this terracotta stuff so it looks quite Mediterranean. That's the idea, very Spanish feel to it. Got your pergola there, which must be a Spanish word, isn't it? Pergola. Yeah, yeah, there you go, you see it? Perfect. <laughs> so you can almost say it properly. Yeah. Pergola. <laughs> and that's going to get covered in all these plants. that are going to be quite private to sit there as well, nice and cosy when everything grows up too. And once it's all grown together, you know, all these plants will really fill out and so you won't even see much of the ground. It'll just be lots of plants, really lush and green. And easy to look after as well. Yeah, no maintenance. It's fantastic. So what does it mean to have it all done in one day? <sighs> It's a dream come true, really. Yeah. We yeah. never thought... It's just amazing. Garden finished. It reminds me of Spain. Seriously, I mean, it's just a spot on. It's, it's lovely. It really um, was like Spain in a Welsh kind of way, wasn't it? I'm sure they're going to use it. I think they're going to be camping out somehow. <laughs> I think you're right, in yeah. The Welsh. So what's uh, goodbye in Welsh? I've no idea, but thanks is Jochen Vau, or Vau, or something like that. Uh, adios. <laughs> goodbye, guys. See you next time. Yeah. Bye! Bye!